A quartz watch is powered by a battery. A mechanical watch is powered by a spring. But to say that because this watch has a battery, it's not a mechanical watch, is an oxymoron. When I open this 1978 Hoyer Model 8440 dive watch to diagnose what was wrong, I was amazed by the beauty of its mechanical parts and completely overwhelmed by the sheer number of wheels, pinions, cover plates, springs, and other bits that you would also find in its non-electrified Model 844 cousin. Hi, I'm Mike, and I've recently started my journey into watch repair and watchmaking, also known as horology. As a teenager and young adult, I started acquiring a variety of wristwatches. Some of my oldest watches are cherished gifts. Many watches, like my Quartz Seikos, Armatrons, and Timexes, I bought inexpensively in the 80s and 90s. But they all share one thing in common. They've all been packed away in a drawer these last 25 years. Whether you have a collection of watches that needs attention, you've inherited a watch that needs a little bit of love from someone important in your life, or you want to learn to diagnose and repair and refinish watches you've acquired in the second-hand market, I hope that by sharing my watchmaking journey, you'll feel empowered to build your own horology skills, or at the very least, be entertained. Let's jump right in. Okay, as we're getting started, let me level with you. This is only the second watch with metal gears that I've ever taken apart. So my... Um, Problem solving skills are, are somewhat haphazard. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart and, and see what works and see what doesn't work. Now we have a lockdown crown, but the problem here is very obvious. The winding stem simply comes loose. And it's been like this for years. When it broke, I just stuck it in the drawer and I just kind of gave up on this watch. But now I'm intent on fixing it. Now, I've already had this watch open so I could see what kind of battery it took. If you want to see a video on how to get off watchbacks, check out the video that I made previously. I'll put a link right up here. With the back off and the stem out, we can just turn over the watch and the movement with the hands comes right out. Let's get rid of this old gasket that will get replaced. And now that the watch is open, I'm gonna try again, see if I could reseat this winding stem. I thought maybe just mechanically by taking it out of the case, something may have gotten knocked loose. Let's just see if it, see if it works. Well, it doesn't, so we're going to have to remove the dial so we can get to the winding mechanism, but to do that, we have to take off the hands. So we'll use these little hand pry tools I have a piece of plastic on there so I don't scratch the dial. That did the job. Take a look at the glow-in-the-dark loom on these hands. The viscous luminous paint is applied liberally to the back of the hands and it neatly fills in the hand cutouts when viewed from the front. I don't want to scratch the dial face with my tweezers, picking up the second hand, so I'll use a piece of Rotico, that green putty. Rodico is a staple of watchmaking which lets you pick up or hold tiny parts but can also absorb dust, grease, and oil off watch parts and lots, lots more. So we're going to get rid of this ring. That's a spacer ring that keeps the movement securely in the body. And now I'm going to use the microscope so I can figure out how the dial is attached to the main plate. So it looks like that post is being held in place by this clip. It looks like it hinges here. There we go. So that seems to have popped. By theory, let's see if there's another one on the other side. Ah yes, there it is. Okay. I had to angle the watch to see it because it was hiding behind the circuit board. And there we go. Let's see if we can now get the watch face off. Ah, and it comes right off. Yeah. 
So it looks like the dial's in pretty good shape. We'll take a look at it under the microscope. The dial is flat black painted with painted markings. Cool, looks good. And with that, we can get a good look at the dial side of the watch. And before we start working on it, let's tuck those little uh, dial mounting posts or the dial mounting clips back in place so we don't damage them. So my goal here is to observe. I want to take a look at how things work, how things go together. And using the microscope, I'm checking, well, just to understand the parts and, you know, see what's spring loaded. And I'm also looking for damage. With it open, I thought I'd give another try at, at seeing if I could see any problems, see what's actually binding when you put in the winding stem. And this is definitely a problem. This is supposed to be a spring-loaded button that goes up and down, and, and that's what will release the winding stem when you press down on it. But as you can see, it is just plain jammed. So it looks like I'm going to need to remove the calendar ring and this big cover plate to access the keyless works, the gears and levers and springs that set the time and hold the stem in place. Oh, well, that is uh, maybe the first time it happened on this watch, but it's not going to be the last. Here's another issue I experienced, magnetism. You really don't want magnetism <laughs> in a watch, and, and you can see these uh, parts are magnetized, the screws are magnetized, and my tweezers are magnetized. So I do have a demagnetizer, and I'm demagnetizing like crazy as I go. Before I started working on the watch, I also noticed that that little date number was kind of not in the window uh, lined up right, and I'm looking at the teeth to make sure that they're all good because I, I figured they might be binding. So now we can finally see the keyless works, and this is the mechanism that allows you to both set the watch, and in this case, you don't have to wind it um, because it's a quartz watch. From what I can see, everything's pretty clean. I, I don't see chunks of metal. What I do see is that everything's very dry. So lubricating this watch is important. Now, as I take out these gears, uh, you'll notice that I often flip them over. I, I want to see what's on the other side. I'm looking for wear and damage, but I'm also chronicling for myself which way they go back into the watch. Um, this is an interesting gear in that it is in a sliding cutout. See that almost rectangular uh, hole? Um, that's because this entire gear slides back and forth. It engages and disengages when you go to set the date. Taking out more parts, and now we're really digging down into the keyless works, and I suspect that my problem with that winding stem lies somewhere in here. I'm hoping just to see that it's out of place and not that there's something broken. I'm not sure I'd know if something was broken because I didn't have a parts diagram at this point, so I really didn't have a good reference. But eventually I found some good resources, and I'll show you how I found them a little later in the video. Here I am just experimenting. Without a diagram, you can kind of figure out how the parts and the keyless works engage each other. In fact, most watches work on a similar principle, with the levers and posts engaging with each other and the yoke riding in the groove that's on that barrel-shaped gear called the sliding pinion. And so I'm, I'm going through the different positions that these levers are supposed to be in when the winding stem is in. Now, unfortunately, everything wants to kind of pop out. So we know where this gear goes. We'll get that out of the way because he's being a troublemaker. This bent up looking part is called the yoke and that rides in that groove on that sliding pinion. Now, while this looks bent up, it's actually, that's what it's supposed to look like. So now we're going to take out the setting lever and we've seen this before. The setting lever has this post on the back. This post here is what we saw earlier. You press on that to release the stem. And that's what was jammed in place. And then this post below it, that's what rides in the groove on the stem, locking it in place. As we take apart the rest of the keyless works, I want to point out just how dry 
these parts are. And you can see the residue of where there was once lubrication. It is there no more, so we'll need to lubricate it. The last part I'm going to remove from the dial side of the watch for now is this cannon pinion. And now we can start taking apart the electronic side of the watch. This is the battery hold down. Now we'll remove the cover that is protecting the coil. The coil is that copper colored bobbin covered in wire. It's very delicate, so it's got its own cover to protect it. With the coil cover off, we can remove the final screws that hold the circuit board in place. Did you notice that this screw is black? I don't know why. I suspect it might be because it's anti-magnetic, but I don't know. If you know, please let me know in the comments below. Some of these screws make contact with the circuit. So I'm assuming that that's the way of grounding the circuitry from the circuit board to the main plate of the watch itself. With the circuit block separated from the movement, we can get a better look at the components and get an idea of how a quartz watch operates. Here's a simplified explanation. The quartz crystal is housed in this metal cylinder. When the power from the battery is applied to it, the crystal vibrates at a very predictable rate, 32,768 times per second. This integrated circuit chip counts the vibrations and sends a brief burst of power to the coil exactly once per second. The coil energizes electromagnets in the stepper motor, alternately switching the poles between north and south which in turn precisely rotates the stepper motor rotor. The rotor has a pinion that directly engages the gears, called the train of wheels, which moves the hands of the watch. We're going to remove the battery insulator shield and then take a closer look at the train of wheels, which is beneath this train wheel bridge. Looking at it on the microscope, you can see how all the gears mesh together and the uh, train wheels actually take up a very small part of this watch. You can see how the uh, wheels go through the main plate here. And now we're going to take a look at the stop lever. Uh, this lever stops the watch from running when the stem is pulled all the way out. This feature is called hacking or sometimes called a hack and it allows you to precisely set the watch down to the second. Now I have a feeling that this may be popping out or part of the problem with the watch jamming. So I want to fully understand how it engages with the keyless works. Taking a closer look at the train of wheels, we can see how they interact with each other. And we can take a look at the rotor that's part of the step motor. The rotor has permanent magnets and you can see it snapping into place. This train wheel bridge holds the wheels in place, and I'm curious to see what the pivot holes look like when we flip it over. On this watch, the pivot holes are metal. On some watches, the pivot holes are made from jewels, a man-made ruby, and the watch might say 17 or 21 jewels. It refers to the pivot holes, uh, but in this watch, no jewels, just metal pivot holes. We'll continue taking out the wheels, taking a look at them, remembering what order they go in, taking a look at both sides, looking for damage, and just seeing how they work. You can see the stop lever fully exposed, and I'm going to use a stick to hold it down so it doesn't go flying off. We'll get this out of the way, and finally remove the stepping motor rotor. To give you an idea how small it is, I'm going to hold it against the winding crown, which you can see on the right hand side. With the parts out of the way, you can see the maker's marks on the bottom of the main plate. Over on the left, it says AS, and then over on the right, it says ESA. I guess these are both the manufacturers, or it's co-manufactured. And then down at the bottom, it says 536-121. Well, with this information, you know what the movement is. If you wanted parts for the watch, you would simply specify AS slash ESA, 
caliber 536.121 and you should be able to find either a replacement movement or parts for this movement. Well, I guess this is part of the learning curve, but when you flip the watch over and look at the dial side, the keyless works and calendar works are the same parts as a completely different watch movement, in this case, the ETA 2836. I guess it makes economic sense that if you have a bin of existing parts that you know work, hey, use those parts, save some money in the production. This gigantic spring is by far the biggest spring in the watch. It's called the unlock yoke spring. And I felt like I was pulling out a large splinter removing it. Got it out without sending anything flying. We removed the date drive wheel. And when I took it out and looked under it, oh, it looks messy under there. What is that rust, ground up metal? That definitely can be a problem. This is the unlock yoke. And this is what engages with the cog on the underside of that drive wheel. Let's get this unlock yoke plate out of the way. And let's take a look at this yoke. I'm, I'm really nervous about this copper looking powder that's in here. Maybe that's gumming up the works. All right, with the main plate completely clean, I'm taking a look at the pivot holes and examining them for any damage, uneven wear. And there's a lot of, I don't know if this is corrosion or just built up, what, muck, dried oil? It's all gonna get cleaned. Speaking of cleaning, we're cleaning the uh, crown and winding stem. Ooh, years of gook. Time lapse forward, the parts are cleaned. And I used an ultrasonic cleaner um, with some dish soap and warm water. And then after everything was cleaned, I ran it through some isopropyl alcohol. And now I'm doing a final pass and, and trying to get whatever was gummed up that didn't come off in the ultrasonic off. And as you can see, the ultrasonic did a really good job on many of the parts, but this uh, unlock yoke, it had some problems. You know, not only was there corrosion or dirt coming off it, but it looked like it was cracked. There was a gouge out of it. And I didn't know if the part was broken, uh, but definitely that gouge could have been causing a problem. So we're just going to uh, try to flatten it. So I took some 3000 grit wet or dry sandpaper, a little bit of Windex, and uh, here we are. We're just going to give this a good polishing on both sides under the microscope. So here's a look at it after polishing it, and I'm gonna use some Rodico to remove the little metal bits because we don't wanna introduce those metal bits back into the watch. And after it's all polished, yeah, you can see the little scratch marks, but it's actually very fine and uh, much cleaner. I roughly put everything back together. Now I had to do the train of wheels off camera because frustratingly, I just couldn't get it the first time or the second time or the 10th time. And I turned off the camera and I put it back together. And uh, so here you're seeing the assembled form. And now it is time to lubricate the watch as we're putting it back together. I've got grease in that cup to the left and here's an oil. Come on, get off there. We're using surface tension to transfer a tiny drop of oil to the oiling cup. The oil goes on the pivots where they're high speed and then any place where it's low speed, high stress is going to get the grease. A little bit of that green Rodico putty cleans up the unnecessary grease or oil. And we'll put this cover plate back in place. And we are well underway on reassembling this watch. Now, since I had so many problems with the uh, keyless works, I'm gonna be trying this at various times to make sure that the, uh, the gears are all engaging and that it is setting and doing what it's supposed to do. Feeling pretty good about it, we're going to start reassembling the electronics. I'm actually feeling really good about this, this part. It took so long to get to this point, 
Um, I've condensed it here in the video. Uh, I got to tell you, when it's all coming back together, you keep your fingers crossed. It, it's a strange kind of anticipation. It's like you don't want pride before it's actually together and working, but all I could say is right here I was very hopeful. So we're switching it back over to the dial side of the watch. Again, lubricating as we go. And sometimes lubricating too much. Okay, we're putting that uh, yoke lever back in place. And now the drive date wheel. Remember that gigantic spring, that unlock yoke spring? That's going to become my nemesis. A little foreshadowing there. A little spoiler, if you will. Making sure everything's in place. Okay, now we just have to get this spring in. Will it be easy? Can we do it on the first try? Are we good? Do we do it? success okay we're getting close here folks here's a little trick I picked up yep you guessed it on YouTube it's just a controlled way of applying a very fine coating of grease to the inside of that date wheel got a little bit too much right there no match for the Rodico Date wheel back in place. That date wheel jumper spring. We'll get that fastened down. And now we'll engage that little click spring. That spring holds the date in the right position. Oh, good thing I felt that hit my palm. And with that, I believe that completes the assembly of the movement. Okay, let's see if we can get this puppy put back together. First click. Now this is a little frustrating because the date is not turning. Two steps forward, one step back. Hey folks, here's a teachable moment. Check your part spin. You know what I found? Look at this, the dial support ring. I forgot I had taken it off. And that's what was jamming the dial against the calendar wheel. Of course it wouldn't turn. Oh, live and learn. I'm getting my practice. Take it apart, put it back together. Take it apart, put it back together. Practice makes perfect, right? Well, practice makes better, let's just say. Let's set that in place. We'll just check to make sure that it's, it's parallel with the face. So with the confidence we gained by perfectly aligning the hour hand, let's put the minute hand in place. Set it, and let's make sure we have the proper clearance between the hour hand and the minute hand. But mission control, there's another problem. <coughs> See that? The date is changing at like four o'clock in the afternoon. Not cool, so we're going to get more practice setting hands. 
Find the exact point that the date changes and that will become our new midnight. Now many of you probably noticed I never did get the date to appear properly in the window. Well, I don't know what's wrong and I've just decided to let it go for now. And with that, we'll take out the winding stem so we can put the movement back in the case. We'll put in the movement spacer ring. We're going to place the case back over the movement. And when we have it where we want it, we're going to flip it over, returning it to its home. We're making sure that the movement and the spacer ring are aligned so we can insert the stem. And let's see if it goes in and stays in place. Oh, that's exactly what we wanted to hear. Huge, huge relief. Let's put in a battery, attach the clip, and now carefully spin that case back in place, making sure that we don't cross-thread it. It wasn't going on. You know why? Ha! That movement spacer ring was upside down. There we go. That felt better. That sounded better. Very nice. Despite having to go back and troubleshoot many more times than I show in this video, I'm really proud that I got this dive watch working, which I've owned since high school and was broken for at least 30 years. It's running great, and I learned so much fixing it. I took what I learned fixing this watch, and I've already started working on fully mechanical watches, which I'll be featuring in upcoming videos. I'm Mike, the channel is Watch With Mike, Thank you for coming along on my watchmaking journey. Be good, be well, and be safe, and I look forward to our next time together.